ICCO, Dent Church Aid and Christian Aid have a wide network of local uh, partner organizations, local NGOs. They have been able to provide on a very small scale some food and water on the border to Uzbek people. That has been very, uh, very small scale. Unfortunately, ours, uh, we as agencies of Act Alliance have not been able yet to translate our funds which we have available for emergencies like this into um, aid, humanitarian aid that has to be delivered to the people in need. What would you need to get it through? Would you need a complete lull in the fighting? Would you be able to get it in if you had armoured vehicles or something to that? What's your situation for getting something in? Well, what we need um, is basically a kind of guarantee, at least something that comes close to it, that we can at least transport the humanitarian aid um, as good as possible. The security situation at this moment does not allow that. The second thing is, is that we must have some kind of guarantee of equal distribution of the humanitarian aid that is available. Those two items, the safe transport and um, equal distribution, is very important for us as agencies. And are we talking absolute basics that people need there, basically food, water and shelter? It's very simple, it's very basic, but yeah, indeed, it's food, water, shelter and medicine as well. Who are you dealing with directly? Are you dealing with the, with the government in Kyrgyzstan? Are they offering you anything? Because there seems to be a lot of sort of hands in the air from the government and saying, look, we can't do anything, we need everyone else's help. Yeah. Um, Act Alliance agencies working in Kyrgyzstan have um, a lot of meetings with the uh, United Nations, with Red Cross, Doctors Without Borders. Many agencies were trying to coordinate their aid and also discuss what kind of intervention is needed. In those discussions, um, also, and the interim government indeed is on the table and is discussing it. But on this so far, it does not lead to very constructive um, uh, meetings in the way that we are able to guarantee the safety and equal distribution. So is it worth almost circumventing going to other governments or other groups and, and trying to find a new way in? Because from everything you're saying, it seems like you're at a dead end. You can't get anything through. Indeed, um, uh, very fortunately, we are able to use our local network. We have a lot of local NGOs, which we are now in this moment trying to see if they are capable um, of handling, for example, distribution of aid. Um, please uh, be aware that um, these agencies work in the south, so also they have lost families and staff members. So first of all, we must be able to reorganize them um, as soon as possible. And we are doing that uh, very um, on, this, on this single moment. So we're working for that for 24 hours a day. And we are going to try that option as well, certainly. Just on a slightly different note, what do you hear from contacts you might have in the region? You know, a lot of the official lines are that, well, things are, are sorting themselves out, things are quietening down. Is that what you hear from people there? Not at all. I was quite surprised this morning reading in the newspapers um, that from the government there was a, a statement that things were under control. We have a wide network of partners who we call uh, almost every hour who are eyewitnesses to situations. There are dead bodies on the street. There are gangs fighting still each, uh, with each other, Uzbek, Kyrgyz, but also the army, of course. A lot of still shooting is going on. Um, we absolutely can confirm the situation is not under control and people are in need. The water, I mean, it's always for one week it's, it's going on. 100,000 people running for their lives basically mm. and I truly hope that as soon as possible we can solve this uh, situation and at least get some humanitarian aid in the country.